I spent the better part of three years in Japan and then came to Sydney and kind of, yeah, 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 I've, have continued what I learned. Where am I? Okay, 19 years ago, I went to Japan. I didn't know a thing about the country and I ended up in Yamagata in this little town here in the middle of the hills. Um, population of 260 people. It was, it was a non-sen resort, so the Japanese would go there to experience Japan. So on the weekends, there'd be 2,000 people. This is a town I lived in. There were 14 ryokans. There was no street. There was a river running through, and it smelled like rock, rotten eggs. Um, I went there for two and a half years on the promise that I couldn't leave this town, because if I went to the big town near it, they'd know I'd run away, and I'd lied to run away from a horrible hotel. This is Fuji-san. He, um, his family had the real Khan I worked in for 300 years, and he was like heir to the throne. He was my first boss. He was the downhill slalom ski champion for Yamagata, so he was really cool to hang out with. We had a deal, I'd drive, he'd drive to the slopes, we'd go skiing, he'd sit up the top and drink beer, and I'd drive home. Atsushi met Jeannie, this lady here. She became the first ever Gaijin Okami-san. So she married into this 300 years of, of being an innkeeper. She fought with her mother-in-law, and um, her mother-in-law spat the dummy and said, that's it, you, you take over the kitchen. My first job was cleaning these steps, which I did for, for six months. I was a Bantu-san, I, I cleaned the steps, I cleaned the baths, I made beds until finally Jeannie said, can you cook? I said, yeah. I'll give it a go. So um, I was hidden in there for two years, cooking the, the country style food. We did, there was only eight rooms in the hotel and we had three different menus. This is the Masashi son. He gave me my first ever knife after being there one year. Um, he, he, he later died on, on the second visit. I, I went there from, from a cold, but um, an amazing, amazing man. He had the only sushi bar in the town. And he knew everything about everyone. It was like, you know, an olden style Twitter going to him. <laughs> my love of knives started after that. And um, my first wife was Japanese. Her, her mother played tennis with the wife of the director of Aritsugu, this really cool knife brand. So he's been supplying my knives for 15 years and I get a really good discount. <laughs> what I love about Japan is all the, the quirkiness and the almost anime stuff. This is a a sprite, he's a kappa. He, um, he's in charge of a whole suburb of Tokyo called Kapabashi where you can go and shop just for restaurant items. He eats cucumbers and lives under a bridge. So <laughs> the sushi roll, the kappa maki, is a cucumber roll named after him. This is Tsukiji, the fish market. Tsukiji means reclaimed land. And in um, the 1950s, they built a fish market on the reclaimed land in Tokyo Bay. They're still practicing the, the food safety standards from 1971. And as a result, 20, 30 years later, they've got to move to another place. Um, this is one of the tuners that was in Tsukiji, and this is Australia. So um, I was really happy to find this fish. Um, the Japanese obviously eat a lot of fish. And um, what goes through that market daily is a real eye-opener in that we really have to be thinking about sustainable, sustainable produce. It was in Japan that my love affair with tuna started. Um, I can do a hundred things with a tuna. This particular tuna, we cut his head up and I took it to a barbecue in DY. Everyone pulled their sausages out and I pulled this split open tuna head out and we loved it. Um, one of the busiest crossings in Tokyo. Like, I lived in the country for, for three years. I married a Japanese actress and she was from Tokyo. So from having three years of, of growing up, not knowing what the city was like, I really loved when I finally got to you know, meet and greet Tokyo. It's so fast paced. It's so artistic. There's no shame in, in anything. You can, you can walk down the street where whatever you like and no one's going to judge you. No one's going to bat an eyelid. And that's also the way with, with the craft of, of making food and making drinks as well, which I've also become very fond of, which is the sake making. I thought I knew a lot about Japan, but um, until you meet craftsmen who do day-to-day -day stuff. This is um, Mr. Takazawa. He's got a, to a restaurant in Tokyo and he seats 10 people a night. The night I went there, he only sat six. Um, you can't find this restaurant. It's written on a little stainless steel door handle. And it's really, really, really exclusive. He doesn't cook for, for the money, he cooks for the love. 
This is one of his dishes. It's like a, a McDonald's play meal. It's called Takazawa's Garden. His cousin grows the vegetables. He has another cousin who grows the meat. This is a little yogurt drink from some, ca from some cows that another cousin had. He brings everything together on a plate. This is a guy called Amabuki. This is his sake. And um, over the last 20 years, sake sales declined. But what he did is he took and has taken the flour and the, the yeast from flowers and uses that to pollinate, or not to pollinate, to, to germinate the mould to make sake. Another brewer we use is, is Kosaima. This is for our restaurant in Sydney. Kosaima sake, 400 years of brewing history in one family. They're all 13th generations. This is a, a sake tasting I did of 127 different kinds of sake. We start, started spitting at the beginning and the end. It's like, ah, it's just swallow. Um, this is five o'clock in the morning, making sake. So the rice has been cooked. You have to cool it down. But I love that, you know, 400 years I've been doing exactly the same thing in this, in this Kura, this, this brewery. And there's no food safety standards. No one gets hurt. Everything, everything's fine. There's a bit of mould everywhere. Mould's actually good for sake. The brewer from Kazaiman, he actually does the labels as well. So what I love about this label is that it's Yuzu Saki, and when you tip the bottle, this is a little drop that ends up in your glass. So from someone who's made the sake, he's done the labels as well. I think that's really, really cool. This is 10 years ago. This is my office. This was in Sushi Yi in, in establishment. And what I love about this, I, I'm still feeding those guys from the, from the stock exchange 10 years later. So from, from 10 years in Japan to there, that, that was kind of my dream come true. I've become a sushi chef.